Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about the developments of the War of 1812, which kind of falls under Madison's gamble because President Madison, James Madison, is now taking the office in March of 1809. Um, and we're going to have some issues that develop as a result of his new administration. So one of the things that happens is Congress adopts what is known as a new measure to try and bargain with um, the deal dealings with the world of trade. So it's known as Macon's Bill Number 2. It happens in 1810. It promised basically American restoration of trade to France and or England if they either drop the commercial restriction. So basically whoever would be willing to come to our aid would be willing to trade with them. Um, so Napoleon takes this as an advantage to use this opportunity, and in August of that year he announced that the French commercial restrictions would have been lifted, but at that time we basically should have been very careful about that um, and that we could start trading with France, but as we know, Napoleon doesn't really hold on to his word. This is towards the end of his empire development. He lies, uh, never really re lifted those restrictions that he had, he had mentioned that he would lift, um, and basically starts duping us into getting more involved in European affairs and getting us involved in a war, which we're about to declare. But let's talk about the Western Front first. When I say the Western Front, I mainly mean dealing with the Native American issue as we get further into the Western areas of Ohio and Indiana. So in 1811, we have new politicians coming in, um, uh, getting rid of these old submission men. One of those is going to be Henry Clay of Kentucky, who's very young but becomes the Speaker of the House at this point. Um, some of these politicians were very, very adamant about getting rid of the Indian threat on the frontier. Um, some of these people are very aggressive, and they're going to be known as war hawks, and they're going to be arguably the people who launched us into this War of 1812. Um, so Indians at this point have watched with increasing apprehension more and more white settlers into the areas of Kentucky um, and even moving in further westward. Um, and you can see how they would be apprehensive. Um, and one of these groups is going to be the brothers, Shawnee brothers of Tecumseh and the Prophet, as they're known. They're deciding that eventually they're going to act on their own um, and try and gather some followers, urging them to give up basically traditional ways of Americans' uh, attire and everything and, and adopting the more traditional ways of the Native American. Um, and they basically hated uh, the idea of white men being involved in their land, urging that no Indians should cede control of land to whites unless all Indians agreed an all-or-nothing policy. Um, so they're going to start resisting um, in parts of Kentucky and going even further into Indiana and Ohio. So in November of 1811, um, led by the general at this point, a rising star, William Henry Harrison, um, advances upon Tecumseh's headquarters at Tippecanoe, kills the prophet, and burns down the camp. Um, he will be known as the famous uh, winner of the Battle of Tippecanoe. Um, he also will kill, um, Tecumseh was killed as well by him, um, so he's killed the prophet and Tecumseh at the Battle of Thames in 1813, and basically dissolving this Indian confederacy that was starting to develop at that point. Now in the south, when we get down to Florida, we'll see the developments of Andrew Jackson crushing the Creek Indians at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend in 1814, uh, breaking up that Indian rebellion and leaving us uh, basically the entire area east of Mississippi open to safe settlement. So he'll go on a battle cry against the natives as well. So these war hawks are basically trying to get rid of the Indian um, from pretty much all their bases, including Canada. Um, and they're also angry that uh, oftentimes that we're finding weapons um, of English descent in their hands. So sometimes the English were uh, indirectly fighting us by supplying the natives with weapons to fight us on the frontier. So eventually war is going to be declared in 1812. The House had more of a, a growing vote with 79 to 49, but the Senate was pretty close with 19 to 13, showing that most of the country was not completely united on this war. So as we see, why did we actually go to war with Britain and not France? So we declared war on, in the War of 1812 against Britain, mainly because the English had been impressing American sailors. So basically they would confiscate American sailors and put them in their, in their navy. Um, and the, we got to remember that France was more aligned with uh, the Republicans or the former JDRs. Um, and a lot of people saw Canada, which was being held at this point by the British, as a tempting prize for basically expanding our frontier even further and perhaps gaining even more um, land mass for farming. Um, at the same time, New England, on the other hand, didn't really like this. They had a lot of money involved in trade, um, and they possibly would lose that due to going to war with Britain, which had the strongest navy. Uh, they wanted a free sea. The Federalists opposed the war because they were more inclined towards Britain, as we know. Um, and if Canada was conquered, it would give more land for, as I mentioned before, agriculture and increase Republican supporters. So in brief, as we know here, uh, reasons for entering the war, freedom of the seas, United States wanted the right to sell and trade without fear, and the British 
British were not allowing that, the possibility of land perhaps in Canada and or Florida, and the Indian issue. Americans were being upset that British people's guns were being found um, in the Native Americans' hands, so eventually we committed to war, and this war will divide pretty much New England against it, and the western frontier and part of the south are for it. Um, and you can show this disunity um, later on, and eventually it'll come to a draw. And we'll discuss it more in depth with key battles and so forth, but I just wanted to introduce this War of 1812 to you.